Okay, in this example, uh, let's graph a piecewise function first. Okay, piecewise function has more than one expression, more than one expression depending on the input. Depending on the input, so if the input in this case, the input, if the input is, if the x values are less than zero, then the function is x plus three. So actually this has two functions, f of x equals x plus three, if the input is less than zero. So there's another function that is f of x equals negative x plus four, if the input is greater than or equal to zero. So there are two different functions that we need to apply. So if you graph this one, let's graph this. Okay, if x equals zero, this is zero. If x equals zero, then the graph is x plus three. The graph of x plus three is x equals zero, then y is three. x equals zero, then y is one, two, three. And this is a straight line, so if y equals zero, then if the y equals zero, y equals zero, then what is x? x is negative three. So the graph looks like this. So if x is less than, less than zero, x is less than zero, then we have a y value all the way up to three. But three is not included because x is not zero, x is not, there's no equal sign. So three is not included, so I will put the y-intercept open circle. Open circle means this point is not included in this function. Okay, how about the second condition? If the output, uh, the input, if the input is greater than or equal to zero, then we will use the second equation. The second equation, second function. So the second function is, Okay, x equals zero, x equals zero, then x equals zero, then y equals four. So x equals zero, then y is four. This is four. And if y equals zero, if y equals zero, then x is four. x is four. So this is the x-intercept, y-intercept of the second function. Because the second function, the domain of the second function is x is greater than or equal to zero. Then the graph is this. So there are two line segments, two lines. One is the line that is when x equals less than zero, which is this part. And there's another line if x is greater than or equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero, there's another line on the right side. So this is the graph of piecewise function. Okay, this time let's check the graph of parent functions. Okay, there are six types, but there are more, but let's check only these six types of parent function. Okay, f of x equals c. c is a number, c is a number. Then the graph of this constant is now y equals c, y equals c is a wholly vertex. So this is a horizontal line, horizontal line passing through y equals c. Okay, f of x equals x, this is a linear equation. So when x equals zero, y equals zero, it passes through the origin and it's a straight line. Okay, absolute value of x, the absolute value of x is a V shape when x equals zero, y equals zero, this is the, the graph is V shape. And make sure that absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay, the square root of x function, square root of x is, or x equals zero, then y is zero, and it looks like this. But as x increases, y also increases slowly. Okay, x square function, x square function is you know, you square a value, negative, positive, it becomes all positive y values. So it is a U-shape, concave up, the graph opens upward. And x cube, the cube function is like this, x equals zero, then y is zero, and then if x is negative, then it goes down. 
So this is the graph of x cubed. So these are the parent functions. And for each function, look at the, let's, let's check the domain, domain and the range. The domain, okay, the domain is what? Domain is the x values. So x is all real numbers, as you can see here. And x can be any real numbers. How about the range? Range is the y value. In this case, the y value is only c. Okay, how about f of x equals x? The graph of x, of course, the domain is all real numbers, but the range is, uh, the range is also, it can be all positive values, all negative values. So the range is all real numbers. How about the absolute value of x? The domain is, x can be any real number, it doesn't matter what the x value is. So all real number. How about the range? The range, the y value is greater than or equal to zero. As you can see here, the minimum y value is zero and it's going up. So y is greater than or equal to zero, which is the range. How about square root of x? The square root of x, the domain is, okay, the domain is the x values. The minimum x value is zero and going all the way to the right. So the domain is greater than or equal to zero. Do you remember? the restriction, the domain, we get the x values, input values from inside the square root. So the inside the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. How about the range? Okay, the range is the y value. The minimum y value is also zero. So y is greater than or equal to zero. So the range is greater than or equal to zero. How about x squared? The domain is Domain is the x value, so it doesn't matter what x value is, so x is all real numbers. How about the range? Range is the y value, the minimum y value is zero, so y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, how about the last one, x cubed? x cubed, the domain is the x values, and x value, there's no restriction on the x value, so x is all real numbers. And based on these x values, the graph, the y value of the graph is also above, you know, positive, negative, it doesn't matter. So the range is, the range is also all real numbers. So this is important. The graph of parent functions is really important. So memorize the graph of each function. Okay, the parent functions are uh, all, you know, these, these are all functions because, okay, we can try this. Vertical line test. The vertical line test means draw a vertical line, as I explained in the previous section. Draw a vertical line, then if it intersects at only one point, then this is a function. So even this one, draw a vertical line, it means at one function, uh, one point. Even this absolute value graph, square root, uh, square root function, and then square function, the cubic function, they all meet at one point. So for example, how about this graph? This graph, is this equation, I don't know what the equation is, but if the graph of the equation looks like this, then this is not a function, because once you draw a vertical line, then it meets at two points. How about this? This is a function because you now draw a vertical line, it has only one intersection. How about this point? How about this graph? Is this a function? Is the graph of a function? No, this is not because when you draw a vertical line, this one has more than one intersections. So this is not a function. This is a function. Okay, so we, you can try a vertical line test just to verify if, uh, if that equation is a function or not. Okay, uh, this time let me explain about transformation of a graph of function. Okay. Transformation is, okay, in this case, we will use okay, the graph. We can shift the graph upward or shift the graph downward. 
or shift the graph to the right or to the left, or we can reflect the graph across the x-axis or across the y-axis. So there are six types of transformation in this case. And for, for each transformation, uh, the function will be will change, will be changed to a different function. So let's do a, let's shift up, shift the graph up, three units up. So if you shift this x square graph three units up, then it will be something like this. So this is the x square graph. If you shift up three units, then it will go, it will shift, move, the graph will be moved three units up like this. Then the y value, then the y value is increased by three. So for each value, for each input, for each input, this original y value is increased three. Even when x equals one, when x equals one, it was over here. It was, the y value is this one, but this y value in, is increased three, three units. So what we do is add three to the function. So the function will be, let's say, g of x. Then the g of x will be x squared plus 3. What we do is add 3 to the original function, f of x. So when you shift up, what you do is add 3 to the entire function, f of x. How about shift down? Still the same thing. This is f of x equals x squared. Then if you shift three units down, then this point will be moved three units down. And each point will be moved down. The y value of each point decreases, is decreased by three. So what we can do is the g of x will be the function f of x minus three. So function f of x, which is x squared, minus 3. This means shift the graph of x squared 3 units down. Okay. How about this square root? Square root. Okay, the graph of square root is this. And I want to shift this one 3 units up. 3 units up. Then when x equals 0, then y is 3. x equals 1. y was 1, but it will be 4. So what we do is shift the graph three units up. So the new function will be, the, the new. let's say the function name is g of x, then g of x is the function f of x plus what? Three. So this means shift the graph of square root of x three units up. How about shift the graph down? Then what we do is subtract 3 from the square root of x, square root of x. So this means the graph of square roots of x will be decreased to the units down. Okay, how about cube root? Okay, the cube root, you wanna, we wanna move the cube root graph, cube root graph, 3 units down, 3 units down. So it's going to be like this. Then the function is a cubic, a cubic function. It's cubic function. Into, so add 3 to the cubic function. If we want to uh, sorry, uh, move up, let's shift, shift the graph. Cubic function graph, 3 units up. Then what we do is x cubed plus 3. If we move the graph down, 3 units down, then subtract 3 from the graph. Okay, how about 1 over x? The 1 over x is a rational expression, rational graph. The graph 1 over x graph is this. 1 over x is, if x is greater than 0, then it looks like this. If x is less than 0, then the graph looks like this. So if you shift this graph 3 units up, 3 units up, then it will be something like this, like this, or like this. 
So the function, the new function is 1 over x plus 3. Then this is the graph. The graph will be the graph the graph of f of x is moved 3 units up. Then this function, if you subtract, if you subtract from mm. 1 over 3, 1 over x, subtract 3 from 1 over x, then the graph will be the graph of 1 over x shifted 3 units down. So shifting a graph of a function up or down is simple. What you have to do is add the number of units if you want to shift the graph up. If you shift the graph down, then subtract that much units from the function. Okay, now reflection. Okay, about the reflection. Okay, when we reflect a function, a graph of a function, and across the x-axis, okay, let's check this one. Here it is. This is the graph of square root of x. If you reflect this graph across the x-axis, then x equals, when x equals 1, y is 1. If you reflect it, then the y value becomes negative 1. And negative 2 becomes a positive 2 y value becomes negative 2. So when you reflect it, reflects across the x-axis, it looks like. Oh, sorry about this one. Okay, I accidentally removed the, uh, this note. So I just uh, modified this one. Okay, so when we reflect, when we reflect a graph across the x-axis, x-axis, only the change is the sign of the y value. Only the sign of the y value changes. So when I, let's say when x equals one, y is one. But once you reflect across the x-axis, the y value is now negative one. And even this one, let's say x equals negative one, then y is one, and then if you reflect it, it becomes negative one. Negative one. So. If we want to reflect a graph across the x-axis, the positive, the positive y value becomes negative y value. So the positive, this is the y value. So once you reflect it, then this becomes negative. So something like this. So f of x equals x squared. So once you reflect across the x-axis, then the new function, the new function will be negative f of x the y the sign of the y value changes so the f of so the new function g of x which is the reflected function is negative x squared what you have to do is multiply the function by negative so the when we reflect the x squared function across the x axis then the new function g of x will be uh, x squared change this function, sign of this function, so negative x squared. Okay, then how about the square root function? Reflect the square root function across the x-axis, then it will be negative square root of x. What you have to do is just multiply the function by negative. Okay, how about the cubic function? Then multiply the cubic function by negative. How about the rational function g of 1 over x? Then 1 over x will be multiplied by negative. So this is, so if a function, if a function is multiplied by negative, then the graph will be refracted across the x-axis. Okay, this time let's explain the graph of refracting a function across the y-axis this time, y-axis. So let's try, let's try uh, okay, x cube, x cube. The function, the graph of x cube is this, x cube. Then if x equals one, then y is one. x is negative one, then y is also negative one. Okay, when, you, when we reflect this one across the y-axis, okay, across the y-axis, that means 
when x equals 1, y was 1, but the y value will be still 1, right? 1, but x is now negative 1. Look at this. This point is reflected across the y axis. Across the y axis. So the y value is the same. Y value is the same, but x value is from became from 1 to negative 1. The y value, the x value changes the sign. Okay, how about x equals 2? If x equals 2, then let's say 2 cubed is 8. 8. So if you reflect this one across the y axis, then this point will be moved to this point. The still y value is the same, but the x value, the x value was 2, but the x value now became negative 2. So if x is negative 2, then the y value became this point. So the difference is the sign of x, the sign of x value changes, sign of x changes. Then that, repre that represents the graph is reflected across the y-axis. So what we do is what we'll do is just change the sign of x, change the sign of input. So input, so this point became this point moved to the left like this. Then the x value, the sign of x, which is one, that became negative one. So let me write the function. Here. So when you reflect a graph across the y-axis, then the g of x, the new function will be, okay, the x, the input x, the input x will be changed to negative x squared. So negative x squared. So f of x is equal to x squared, then the new function g of x is what? Change this x with negative one, negative x. Okay, so that is equal to if you simplify this, then it will be x squared. Okay, how about the square root, square root function? Okay, the square root function, the square root function x, this x will be replaced by, the x is replaced by negative x. So this is the function that the graph of square root of x is reflected across the x-axis. How about the cube function? Cubic function is replace the x with negative x. We should put parentheses cubed. Then simplify this, then negative x cubed. Okay, how about the rational function? Okay, the rational function, the g of x equals, put the negative sign, so replace this x with negative sign x, negative x, then g of x is equal to negative 1 over x. Okay, so this should be g of x too. All right. Then let's check this one. Uh, shift, shift the graph of x squared to, let's say, three units to the right, three units to the right. That means here is a graph, x squared, x squared graph. I want to shift this one to the units to the right. Then this point moves to here, and each point moves to the right. Then the graph looks like this. Then the, fun then the function is, okay, x is moved to the units to the right. And let me write the function first. The g of x is equal to, Okay, I'm going to this time replace x with x minus 3. x minus 3. So replace x with what? x minus 3. Then this means x. The graph of, the graph is shifted 3 units to the right. 3 units to the right. So what I did is replace this x with x minus 3. x minus 3. So this means what? Shift the graph of x squared to the units to the right. Okay, how about left? Okay, left means, okay, I want to shift the graph to the units to the left. Let me draw it over here. Okay, this graph, three units to the left. Then this point moves to the left, three units. 
and all the points move three units to the left. Then the function is replace x, replace the variable x with x plus 3. So if x is added 3 units, then this means the graph is shifted 3 units to the left. So plus 3 means move to the left. x minus 3 means move to the right. Okay, so the, when you shift the graph to the units to the right, then this will be g of x will be x plus 3 squared. Okay, let's try x cubed. Okay, for this one, okay, I want to shift the graph 3 units to the right. Then the graph, will, the function will be Replace x with what? x minus 3 cubed. So this means this is the, gra this is the function that uh, the graph of x square x cubed x cube is shifted 3 units to the right. How about to the left? Then if you shift the graph 3 units to the left, then that will be x plus 3 cubed. Okay. How about here is a function f of x, square root, square root, square root of function, square root function. Then I want to shift this one three units to the right. Then the function will be, I will use different function name g. The function will be what? Replace this x with x minus 3. So x minus 3 means shift this graph three units to the right. Minus means to the right. Okay, let's try some example. Okay, I want, okay what, what would be the graph? What would be the graph of this? What would be the graph of square root of x plus two? Now, plus three. How about this? Then this is the graph of what? Okay, first, Here's the square root. Let's say f of x is square root of x. Then the graph of square root of x is this. And this x is, this x is replaced by x plus 2. x plus 2. That means shift the graph of square root of x two units plus means to the left. So shift it two units to the left like this. And then this graph, this is, okay, this is the graph of this square root of function. Then plus 3 means shift 3 units, shift the graph 3 units up. So move this one 3 units up, 1, 2, 3, like this. So the graph of this is shift the square root, graph of the square root, graph of square root, 2 units to the left two units to the left, and then plus three men, three units up. So actually this point, this point is moved to over here. So this will be negative two and positive three. The coordinate, the, old, the coordinate of this point is negative two and three. Okay, try another one. How about this? Let's say uh, g of x is equal to square root of x minus 2. Okay, then we know the graph of square root of x, this square root of x. Then we are subtracting 2 from this graph. So shift this graph to units down. 1, 2. So this is the graph of this function. Okay, in this example, let's graph, okay, I will use the graph of f of x equals x squared. So x squared graph to sketch uh, each function. Then the g of x is x squared minus 2. So I'm going to use the graph of x squared. So the, we know the graph of x squared is 
this one. This is x squared. So this means, so x squared minus 2 means shift the graph of x squared two units down. The y value decreased by 2. So the, this will be the graph of x squared minus 2. How about number 2? h of x equals x plus 3 squared. Okay, so I'm going to use x squared graph because this is something squared and the base, the base x is replaced by x plus 2. So uh, this is x plus 3. So this means this is a uh, transla uh, translation, you know, shifting a graph of x squared, three units where, okay, plus three means to the left. So this, the graph will be, okay, this is the x squared graph, shift the graph of x squared, three units to the left, one, two, three. So the, this is the graph of h of x. Okay. So if the, if the x, the variable x is replaced by x plus 3, then shift 3 units to the left. Plus means to the left. If x is replaced by minus 3, then shift 3 units to the right. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, this example is related to Reflection, reflection of a graph of a function across the x-axis and the y-axis. So the f of x is square root of x. The square root of f, square root of x is a function. And this function has, the sign has changed. And then the graph is what? You know, the function square root of x is, square root of x is the y-value. And the y value sign is changed, negated, then what? It's a reflection across the x axis. Right? So the graph of square root of x is this, and then the y value, the sign of the y value changes. That means reflecting the graph across the y axis. Oh, sorry, across the x axis. So this is the graph of negative square root of x. Okay, how about this? How about number two? The variable x became negative x. If you change the input, the sign of input, if you change the sign of input, that means you are reflecting a graph across the y-axis, across the y-axis. So, this is the square root of x graph. I want to, since x is replaced by negative x, reflect the graph across the y-axis, across the y-axis, so the graph will be this. So the graph is this. Okay, in, this, in this example, uh, let's check the domain and the range of this function. Okay, in order to find the domain and the range, we have to uh, okay, we can graph this one so that we can check the domain x values, input values, and the output values. And we know that the graph is, this is the graph of, okay, translate the graph of square root of x, okay, graph of the square root of x, so this is the graph of square root of x. Okay, since x is replaced by x minus 1, we are translating, we are shifting this graph one unit to the right. One unit to the right, like this. And then this whole y value is increased by three. So shift this graph three units up. Three units up, so that this is the graph. This is the graph of this function. Then the domain is, domain is the x value, so domain is greater than or equal to, the x values, x values are greater than or equal to 1. How about the range? The y value is greater than or equal to the y value. So starting from the minimum y value of this graph is 3. This is 3. So y is greater than or equal to 3. So in this case, uh, without graphing, without graphing we can find the domain and the range. Because usually domain is all real numbers, all real numbers, but since this is square root, there is a restriction. 
inside the square root cannot be negative. So the domain is the inside has to be greater than equal to zero. The inside, the inside of the square root, which is x minus one, has to be greater than or equal to zero. That is the domain. So we can find the domain from the expression inside the square root, the radicand. The radicand x minus one has to be greater than or equal to zero. Then x is plus one each side. Then x equals x is greater than or equal to one. So this is the domain. See, we have the same domain. How about the range? The range, the okay, square root of the range of the square root of x is greater than or equal to zero. The range is greater than or equal to zero. Since we are adding three to the graph, the minimum value is three. The minimum value is three. So the range is, usually the y has to be greater than, y has to be greater than or equal to zero, but since we added 3, y has to be greater than or equal to 3. That is the range. So we can find the domain and the range by graphing the function or by checking the restrictions of the you know, x domains and the ranges. Okay, in this example, let's find the domain and the range of this uh, absolute value function. Okay, the graph of absolute value function is the V-shape. This is the uh, absolute value of x. And now the absolute value of x, the x is replaced by x minus 3. This means shift the graph of absolute value of x 3 units to the right. 3 units to the right. Then it's going to be something like this. And then move the graph of this absolute value two units up. One, two units up. So the graph looks like this. So this is the graph of this function. Then this vertex is, the x value is three, y value is two. Because the vertex zero, zero is moved, shifted three units to the right and two units up. So this is the coordinate of the vertex. Then how about the domain? Okay, domain, uh, x can be any real number. There's no restriction about the domain. So domain is all real numbers. How about the range? The range is, okay, the absolute value, the range of the absolute value is the minimum value of y is zero, but since we moved, shifted this minimum value three, two units up, two units up, the minimum y value is two. So y value is greater or equal to greater than or equal to two. So that is the range. Okay, for this uh, function, let's find the domain and the range range and the graph this function. Okay, the domain. This is a x square function actually. X the parent function is x squared, and then this x is replaced by x minus one. So the graph will be, okay, x squared is this one, the U shape. And this graph is shifted one unit, one unit to the right, one unit to the right, like this. And then the whole Y value is increased by two. So shift this graph two units up, two units up. So this will be the graph of H of X. Then from this, okay, the, okay, let's, let's check the, the vertex. The vertex was zero, zero, but this zero, zero is moved one unit to the right and then two unit up. So this is the coordinate of the vertex. Then from this, the domain is, okay, domain, there's no restriction for the y value, x values. X can be any real number, positive value, negative value, doesn't matter. So domain is all real number, but the range. Okay, range is the minimum y value of this graph is two. So y is greater than or equal to two. So the range is y is greater than or equal to two. Okay, for the summary of transformation, uh, we can shift a graph up or down right or left, or reflect the graph, 
across the x-axis or the y-axis. So let's say f of x, f of x is a parent function or some function. Then once you shift the graph of f of x up for some units, then the function will be this. So when you shift a graph up, then that will be the, uh, what we do is we just add the number of units to the function. So this means the graph is shifted C units up. Okay, if you shift the graph down, then what we do is just subtract the number of units from the function. Okay, when you shift the graph to the right, to the right, then the function, new function will be, okay, what we do is shift, and okay, when you shift the graph to the right, to the right, then replace x with x minus c. So c units right. This means graph the graph the function f of x, graph of the function of x, c units to the right. So x minus c. Replace x with x minus c. Okay, now I want to shift the graph of f of x, c units to the left. To the left, then use x plus c. Okay, replace x with x plus c. x plus c. That means shift the graph c units to the left. Okay, when you shift, or uh, when you reflect a graph across the x-axis, then what we do is the sign up y value changes, right? The positive sign will be negative sign. So what we do is change the sign of this function f of x. Okay, and then when you when you reflect when you reflect across the y-axis, then what we do is the sign of this x value changes. So right, so the function will be replace the x with negative x like this. So this is how the transformation works. So memorize this one, remember and understand and then memorize this.